Chapters 6 through 9 of the Second Letter of Paul to the Corinthians from the American Bible Union's New Testament. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mark Penfold. Chapters 6 through 9 of the Second Letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Chapter 6 and as workers together with him we also beseech you that ye receive not the grace of god in vain for he says in an accepted time i heard thee and in the day of salvation i helped thee behold now is the well accepted time behold now is the day of salvation giving no cause of offence in anything that the ministry be not blamed but as god's ministers commending ourselves in everything in much patience in afflictions in necessities in distresses in stripes in imprisonments in tumults in labors in watchings in fastings in pureness in knowledge in long-suffering in kindness in the holy spirit in love unfeigned in the word of truth in the power of god by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left through glory and dishonor through evil report and good report as deceivers and true as unknown and well known as dying and behold we live as chastened and not killed as sorrowful yet always rejoicing as poor yet making many rich as having nothing and possessing all things o corinthians our mouth is open to you our heart is enlarged ye are not straitened in us but ye are straitened in your own bowels now as a recompense in the same kind i speak as to my children be ye also enlarged be not yoked unequally with unbelievers for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness and what communion has light with darkness and what concord has christ with belial or what part has a believer with an unbeliever and what agreement has the temple of god with idols for ye are a temple of the living god as god said i will dwell in them and walk among them and i will be their god and they shall be to me a people wherefore come out from among them and be separated saith the lord and touch not anything unclean and i will receive you and will be to you a father and ye shall be to me sons and daughters saith the lord almighty chapter seven having therefore these promises dearly beloved let us cleanse ourselves from every pollution of flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of god receive us we wronged no one we corrupted no one we defrauded no one i say it not for condemnation for i have before said that ye are in our hearts to die together and to live together great is my confidence toward you great is my glorying on account of you i am filled with the consolation i am made to abound with the joy in all our affliction for indeed when we were come into macedonia our flesh had no rest but we were afflicted in every way without were fightings within were fears but god who consoles those who are cast down consoled us by the coming of titus and not by his coming only but also by the consolation with which he was consoled in you when he told us your earnest desire your mourning your zeal for me so that i rejoiced the more because though i made you sorry with the letter i do not regret it though i did regret it for i perceived that that letter made you sorry though but for a season now i rejoice not that ye were made sorry but that ye were made sorry unto repentance for ye were made sorry after a godly manner that ye might in nothing receive harm from us for godly sorrow works repentance unto salvation not to be regretted but the sorrow of the world works out death for behold this very thing that ye were made sorry after a godly manner what earnestness it wrought in you yea what clearing of yourselves yea what indignation yea what fear yea what longing desire yea what zeal yea what avenging in everything ye commended yourselves as pure in the matter so then though i wrote to you it was not on account of him who did the wrong nor of him who suffered wrong but that your care for us might be made manifest to you in the sight of god 
for this cause we were consoled but in our consolation we rejoiced abundantly more at the joy of titus because his spirit has been refreshed by you all for if in anything i have boasted to him of you i was not made ashamed but as we spoke all things to you in truth so also our boasting before titus was found to be truth and his tender affection is more abundantly toward you while he remembers the obedience of you all how with fear and trembling ye received him i rejoice that in everything i have confidence in you chapter eight and we made known to you brethren the grace of god which has been bestowed on the churches of macedonia that in much trial of affliction was the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded to the riches of their liberality for according to their power i bear witness and beyond their power they were willing of themselves with much entreaty beseeching of us the grace and the participation in the ministering to the saints and not as we expected but themselves they gave first to the lord and to us by the will of god so that we exhorted titus that as he had before begun so he would also finish among you this grace also but as in everything ye abound in faith and utterance and knowledge and all diligence and your love to us see that ye abound in this grace also i say it not by way of command but through the forwardness of others proving also the sincerity of your love for ye know the grace of our lord jesus christ that though he was rich yet for your sakes he became poor that ye through his poverty might be rich and i give an opinion in this matter for this is expedient for you who began before others not only to do but also to will a year ago and now perform the doing of it also that as there was the readiness to will so there may be the performance according to what ye have for if there be first the willing mind it is accepted according to what a man has not according to what he has not for it is not that others may be eased and ye burdened but by the rule of equality at this present time your abundance being a supply for their want that also their abundance may be a supply for your want that there may be equality as it is written he that gathered much had nothing over and he that gathered little did not lack but thanks be to god who put the same earnest care for you into the heart of titus for he accepted indeed the exhortation but being very zealous he went to you of his own accord and together with him we sent the brother whose praise in the gospel is throughout all the churches and not that only but who was also appointed by the churches as our fellow traveller with this gift which is administered by us to further the glory of the lord and our zeal being careful of this that no one should blame us in this abundance which is administered by us for we provide for what is honourable not only in the sight of the lord but also in the sight of men and we sent with them our brother whom we have often in many things proved to be diligent but now much more diligent through the great confidence which he has toward you as to titus he is my partner and in regard to you a fellow labourer as to our brethren they are messengers of the churches the glory of christ therefore show toward them and before the churches the proof of your love and of our boasting on your behalf chapter nine for concerning the ministering to the saints it is superfluous for me to write to you for i know your readiness of mind of which i boast for you to the macedonians that achaia has been prepared since a year ago and your zeal stirred up the greater part of them but i sent the brethren that our boasting of you might not be made in vain in this respect that as i said ye may be prepared lest haply if macedonians come with me and find you unprepared we that we say not ye should be put to shame in respect to this confidence i thought it necessary therefore to exhort the brethren that they should go before to you and make up beforehand your bounty before promised that this may be ready in manner as a bounty and not as covetousness but as to this he that sows sparingly shall also reap sparingly and he that sows with blessings shall also reap with blessings but each as he purposes in his heart not grudgingly or of necessity for god loves a cheerful giver and god is able to make every grace abound toward you that ye always having all sufficiency in everything may abound toward every good work as it is written 
he dispersed abroad he gave to the poor his righteousness abides for ever and he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness being enriched in everything to all liberality which works through us thanksgiving to god because the ministration of this service not only supplies the wants of the saints but also abounds through many thanksgivings to god while by the proof of this ministration they glorify god for the obedience to your profession of the gospel of christ and for the liberality of the contribution to them and to all they also with supplication for you longing after you on account of the exceeding grace of god in you thanks be to god for this unspeakable gift the end of chapters six through nine of the second letter of paul to the corinthians from the american bible union's new testament recording by mark penfold